Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Let's start today's video with a tale of workplace drama and mishaps from an exotic car dealership known as the largest in the world for its brand. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button, smash the like if you enjoy the content, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a juicy story. Manager told me to send the title when it was his job. A few years ago, I worked at an exotic car dealership. We were the largest in the world for our brand, which will remain nameless for this post, and the exotic car side was run by one of the owners, a manager we'll call Jim, and two others my age who did most of the grunt work with me. We sold cars in all 50 states and would ship them wherever they needed to go. We all worked on every deal and were paid off the profit of the dealership, not individual sales. Jim was a major kiss butt to the owner who oversaw our department. He wasn't good at his job, but he was good at playing the game and needed to stay on the owner's good side. He treated myself and the other younger guys like crap and tried to do as little work as he possibly could. He was openly racist, openly sexist, and knew nothing about the cars we sold or their main competition. Jim's main responsibility was to send out all paperwork to customers and make sure everything was set so we could release the car. A big part of this was making sure the car was registered before shipping it out if they financed through the manufacturer's financial arm. Most did for a slight discount. This often meant sending all registration paperwork to the customer to go register it locally. Jim was the only one allowed to do this as our manager had inherent distrust for the younger guys, even though we genuinely did great work. Don't get to number one in the world for your brand if we weren't doing a good job. Well, when the owner wasn't there, Jim would often do nothing all day and then send some paperwork right before the end of the day. On the day, things came to a head. He spent the morning shopping for pellet smokers and a cruise for his family to go on and kept interrupting me to show me the different options he was looking at. Meanwhile, I was handling two in-person deliveries and dealing with all showroom traffic. Long story short, the end of the day rolls around and he didn't get the paperwork sent out, so he told me to do it. I explained that the owner made it clear that he's the only one allowed to send the paperwork out for a registration, but he said, just send the effing paperwork out. So that's exactly what I did. The title needs to be filled out with the info for the financing company or they'll have no claim to the car and the registration will show no lien. So I sent the blank title out to the customer, knowing that meant they could just sign it and register it like they didn't have a loan. The customer noticed and asked my manager why he left the lien holder off the title, but CC'd our whole department. The owner saw this and freaked out, shouting at my manager saying, how could you F this up? It's so simple which led to my manager having to admit he interrupted my actual work to make me send it out while not clarifying that he hadn't even filled out the title yet and that I had to do that. They sent an overnight envelope to the customer to send it back to us, then we had to overnight it again once we filled it out. He got an earful and the owner never let him live it down. I quit, moved into software sales, network monitoring, code level app security monitoring, and I'll never work in a dealership again. That dude basically gave away an exotic car and still had a job? Am I understanding that right? And our second story. Food order rep chews me out and requests I not forget anything in the order next time. As you wish. My previous job was in hospitality management and I was a supervisor. One of my job duties was to place food orders with our distributor multiple times a week. We had online software that we used to place these orders as it was the quickest way. However, if there was a special order or if there were changes to be made to our order, we had to call our rep at the distributor directly so they could make the necessary adjustments. We had a master list of menu items that we used, everything ranging from giant cuts of beef to individual salt and pepper packets. The spreadsheets we used have about 30 items per page and there were 33 pages total. So when I ordered chicken breast, for example, I scroll past a bunch of other frozen meat we don't need that week, find chicken breast, and enter two cases, for example. There's pages and pages of rarely ordered items, stuff like paper goods for specific holidays, random crap we don't use often, you know? So as a way of making it easier on us all, and other supervisors who place the order, delete the empty lines of the spreadsheet so it's easier on our rep at the distributor, and you don't have to spend time scrolling past empty rows before you get an empty item we're actually ordering. 
There's also a deadline I have to have the order sent in by 4 p.m. On this particular day, I had sent the order in around 1 p.m., and around 1.30, one of the cooks rushes up to me saying they need to add more turkey to the order. Not a problem. I call up our rep and ask for X amount of pounds of turkey to be added. Today, it was not our rep. It was a woman's voice who I did not recognize, obviously filling in and obviously already angry. Me. I need to make an addition to the order I sent in 30 minutes ago. We need to add X pounds of turkey, please. Rep, you can't do that so close to the deadline. You realize you're not my only customer, right? Me, the deadline's two and a half hours away. I know they don't start processing the order on your end until around 5 p.m. anyways. I thought that was plenty of notice. I'm sorry. Rep, this is negligence on your part. This is unacceptable. I noticed you edited out parts of the spreadsheet. Here's a little tip. If you hadn't edited them out, you wouldn't have forgotten the turkey. Me. We didn't forget the turkey, we miscalculated how many pounds we needed. I apologize for that, but it happens. There's really no harm done. Rep. I'll add the turkey for you this time, but this is wasting my time, and I may need to speak to your superior about your job diligence. Don't forget anything next time. Hangs up. I was irked. What I said was true. There really was no harm done. Editing out empty rows is an appreciated gesture by our normal reps, and there was plenty of time to spare. I grew a little malicious. She wanted me to send everything? Okay. I waited patiently until the next order about two days later. I first checked that the rep I had spoken to was still there, working. She was. So I made my standard order, asked the cooks if they needed anything extra, and sent it off without deleting a GD thing. She'd have to sit there scrolling through pages and pages of crap like shamrock-shaped napkins and Valentine's Day place settings because she has to review my ordered items one by one. I smugly sat and smiled for a while. Next day, my manager comes in with a confused look on her face. Hey, OP, I just got a call from rep in question. She said you sent her unnecessary pages of empty spreadsheet in your latest order. I just replied, oh, she specifically told me she didn't want me to forget anything on the order next time I sent it in. She said she wanted everything, but I guess she changed her mind. My manager walked off with a shrug. The situation hasn't arisen since, so I guess it worked. And our last story. Crazy HOA neighbor. So unfortunately, one of my rentals shares the same courtyard as this old Karen, who for the lack of the better description has nothing better to do but be the community mall cop and report people who violate every HOA rule to the board. It's obvious she's been there for a long time as the original owner and she hates tenants and investors and uses her free time to try to annoy and pester anyone in the community that isn't owner-occupied. My tenants are a couple, professional, with a toddler, very respectful, and just all-out good people. So a few months ago, I start getting an inch of HOA violation notices for the stupidest crap. I get one because they left their baby stroller outside in the private patio. HOA rules say private patio is not supposed to be used as a place of storage, and then another HOA notice about leaving a shoe rack outside of their doorstep, and another HOA notice about leaving Amazon open boxes on the patio. It's annoying as F, and every single time my immigrant tenants apologize, and I'm like, WTF, are you apologizing for? You didn't do anything wrong. Some a-hole is being petty, so every single time I go to the HOA board meeting, and argue these stupid write-ups and is like, WTF, point out a dozen or so other units that have a lot more crap on their patio without a violation and threaten to sue the board for selective enforcement of HOA rules, discrimination, and financial damage to me from the constant harassment. And they usually back off and say, never mind. So one day I get a call from them and they say this old lady neighbor was there complaining to them about how they left some beach towels and wetsuit outside on a temporary drying rack to dry and you can't use the patio for that. Holy crap, she's the one that's been complaining all this time. So I go over there thinking the worst, thinking my tenant has this huge six foot tall drying rack hanging similar to the one I have at home and putting out their underwear on it. Only to see when I get there, there's like a two-foot-tall drying rack that's lower than the retaining wall of the patio that you can't even see unless you're literally within five feet from the patio and peeking over. I was thinking, you have to be crapping me, really? So, I'm talking to this old lady that has nothing better to do. Look, ma'am, you can't even see anything from your patio. 
The only way you can see this is if you're within five feet. Just go around and don't bother them and we won't bother you, okay? But no, she has to make her point and be an HOA rule Nazi and reports both me and the tenant to the HOA board. So I'm like, fine, you do that, lady. I go home fuming that this old lady's wasting my time and my tenant's time on stupid crap, find my six-foot-tall laundry rack, drop it off at my tenant's place, and set it up in the backyard patio and tell them to please air dry all your clothes for the next week, especially underwear. And if this lady reports her, let her. Effort. Here's a Starbucks gift card for your inconvenience of not using the dryer. Reluctantly, they did. And yes, I got written up twice for the same thing, which means it included a $200 fine. So I go to the HOA board meeting, Karen ladies there, complaining about how my tenants hung clothes outside two times, despite getting a warning. When the board asked me, I said, yep, that's correct. And it's their legal right to do that in this state. Confused, the board asked me, what do I mean? And I told them, well, in this state, thanks to rules, also known as the right to dry law, an HOA cannot legally ban hanging laundry outside, nor can they have any rules that prevent tenants or owners from hanging laundry outside. No different than legally, an HOA cannot outright ban anyone from putting a satellite dish outside. The HOA can impose rules governing how such drying racks or satellite dish can be placed. For example, rules stating such things cannot be permanently attached to common area or building structure, but they cannot outright ban them, and those rules specifically have to describe the details of those restrictions in order to be enforceable. Your HOA rules governing laundry, clothes, etc. predates AB 1448, which was created for energy conservation by encouraging people not to run a dryer and has no details on the restrictions of when temporary drying racks can or can't be used. So your rule violates state law and not enforceable. My tenant only needs permission to use drying racks and they have my permission. Please don't. Talk to your attorneys because I already talked to mine. HOA board concludes with a, we'll get back to you, Mr. X, and I don't hear about it for a few days. And then finally, I get a call that says, our attorneys review your complaint, and in a nutshell, as long as the drying racks are not being permanently attached, state law says you can have an outdoor dry rack. So, after I got that from the HOA board, was I being a vindictive a-hole when I gave my tenants a Starbucks gift card while asking them for a favor to hang some underwear on a six-foot-tall drying rack outside for two months to crap on the Karen neighbor? Also, was I a bigger a-hole when Karen contacted me to complain further, and I told her, well, if it bothers you so much, you can get one of those patio windshades to block your view so you don't see my tenant's underwear. But if you do that, and if I see it when I'm checking up on my property... I'm going to have to report you to the HOA because, unfortunately, patio windshades are not state law protected class of apparatus from HOA rules, which clearly bans these windshades. Have a nice day. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.